All right, we're at the beginning of the tour. This is what we call the floor jig. So the floor jig is where we're gonna put together the rim joists, and then they'll put the floor joists in. All meanwhile, rest easily on the fiberglass blanket. We use fiberglass insulation in the floor, and we do perimeter heat duct system standard. You'll notice our duct work is insulated as well. This is far better than a lot of what we've seen out there in the past with a galvanized metal duct that can rattle, make noise. It's got its own insulation values to it as well. All these are put through together. Plumbing lines are placed in here. ABS drain lines, PEX, water lines. We like to uh, utilize name brand recognition as much as we can. Once they get the floor joists and everything put together, the crane that you see out here will come over and pick up the entire floor and drag it out to the next station. And that's where the frame is gonna come into play. So if we make our way around over here, we'll take a look at that. We've built all of our own chassis here in, in the plant. You can see the outriggers, foundation ready. You can see the camber to the frame. That's basically designed to set and hold the load of the floor plan, whether that be a heavy half kitchen, bathroom. After they get that all set up on there, then it rolls into the next station and so on. As you can see this next station here, this has a porch on it as well with the pressure treated lumber. And you'll see all the deck board is already on there. We use an OSB tongue and groove, five eighths deck board. It gets, each piece gets glued and mechanically fastened with either staples and or screws and nails. After they get all that done, you'll see over on the next section, they've got the drum sander. So they're gonna take the drum sander and they're gonna sand out every seam and make sure everything is prepared and ready for the rolled goods. Once everything's all prepared and the decking is ready, that's when they'll bring out the rolled goods. If this floor plan has standard rolled goods or the customer's optioned in different flooring, the standard roll goods will go down to your wet areas, kitchens, baths, utilities. It all goes down prior to any of the walls or cabinets. The beauty of working in a controlled environment like this is we're able to build from the inside out. Site construction out in the elements, you're building it outside and in. You gotta get that envelope done because the rain is just penetrating on the floor decking and all the lumber as you're building out there. It's one of the beauties of factory built housing is we bring in kiln dried lumber and all of it's dry from the beginning and stays dry through the end of the process. After the floor goods are laid down, you'll start to see some of the showers and tub combos being put in place after they've put two layers of bisqueen to protect the floor goods. Even the OSB, even if it didn't have roll goods on it, they still put the plastic on there to keep the decking clean. As it rolls into the next phase here and getting ready, you'll see off to the side here, we've got our first wall partitions area. So there's different jigs in there for these guys to lay out the sheetrock, the lumber, all working on a tabletop instead of up on a ladder in precarious positions outside. Once they get those stacked and racked, they put them in their bays and ready for the floor plan to come down. As it gets to this situation, you'll see cranes grabbing walls and bringing out and placing them into position that make up the different rooms and configurations of the floor plan. As we move to the next section, you'll see this one has already started to take on some of the walls. You can see that's the back side of a tub shower getting ready to be put into place. We're going to make our way through some of these walls here because they're in stage to come in onto the line. As we're coming into the next phase, you'll see here's another setup of wall jigs. This particular area in here, we're going to do marriage line walls and or exterior walls. So you'll notice over there, you got two by six exterior walls, 16 inch on center, fiberglass bat insulation, just like we did in the floor. You can see the headers over doors and windows. Some of those will gain size depending on the roof load and or the span of the window or the sliding glass door. They use a foam seal to foam the sheetrock to the studs. And then the back panelers will end up installing after the plumbing electricals in there, which we'll start to see as we go down the line. One of the things I like to point out too is all the extensive bracing that goes on from the wall to the rim joist. This is way overkill if you're building this on site, but this unit has got to transport from here to your site. Once again, pointing out the headers and walls, 16 on center, two by six. As we make our way in here, you'll start to see it's really taking shape. This particular area looks like this is a kitchen and dining room, probably a sliding glass door gonna go here, a walk-in pantry, kitchen window, more than likely the kitchen sink will be along that underneath there. 
open plan to the other side, which is probably gonna be the living room. I like to point this out because we utilize what's known as a double marriage line wall construction. So if you look down between these two sections, this is where A and B are gonna meet on site. So when you look down this, you can see this is an open span and those walls will form together to make a super wall. It's far less site close up and work out in the field. Plus it really upholds the integrity of the box as it transports from here to its permanent site. Here's another good look. This one's actually married together. So you get a really good look here. Those are strictly shipping walls right there, but you can see where those walls are coming together to make one. Here's a good look right down through here. You can see those walls forming to one. So when the unit gets on site, it comes together. That makes a super wall. Those doorways will be closed off with a door casement jam assembly. No sheetrock or close up required. As we're getting along into here, you're gonna see we're coming into kind of the roof jig. So off on the sides behind us, they're gonna be putting together all the roof jigs. So basically the tabletop, the sheetrock gets laid out, the trusses for that depict the roof load and or pitch will be laid out across the table. All the sheetrock is foamed and secured to the truss with a foam seal. So as you see across here, you can see the foam beads along the truss cords. All of our standard application is a 30 pound roof load, 24 inch on center. Standard 312 pitch. We have roof pitches that go 412, 512, 612. Roof loads that go 30, 40, 60, 80, 100, and even as high as 120 pounds. So depending on the floor plan, where the home's going, will depict what we have for a roof pitch and or roof load. Once they get this all dried up, they'll lift this up. And as you can see over here is a suspended roof. That's one of them that just come out of the mud pit. So when they get done with this, they lay it into the mud pit. And we'll be able to take a look at that here in a second. Basically, it gives the workers the ability to work flat-footed on the ground and mud these factory seams. You'll notice there isn't any uh, cross seams. We buy our sheet rock the size we need to cover the span we need of the floor width we need. So we'll take a look at that, get a sneak peek. So basically coming into this room, this is one and two of the mud pit. So essentially I'm right here standing on the ground. I'm able to mud the ceiling seam every four foot factory edge to factory edge, no cross seams. We buy sheetrock long enough to cover the entire span of the roof. So these guys are able to perform this with lighted area to make sure that there's no unwanted mismatched seams. And then they'll spray a fog barrier on it. That's our vapor barrier, which is performed with a paint. They'll spray that application on and that gives them a far cleaner look to make sure that all those seams were mudded the way they needed to be. Once that's done, then they'll lift this up and the unit will meet with its home out onto the wall set in the line that we were just at. So we'll take a, a step back out there and see where we're at. All right, here's a good look. So they're rolling the line right now. You can hear the bells going off. They're moving this uh, section into one another here making room for the next ones to go. As it gets into these areas, we're getting closer to where they're gonna start decking the roof. That's after they've blown in the cellulose insulation. So depending on the R value that the, the customer has chosen to go, will depict how deep the insulation is in the roof cavity. Now we've got to the point where the siders are working on putting all the exterior cement siding, James Hardy siding. This particular one has sheets of cement siding panels on it, running all the way down. They'll buzz out the windows and door frames as they need as they go along. That's also a good vantage point of what we call a sky view dormer. So that particular application replaces the standard 10 foot dormer and gives it a 12 foot trapezoid window and it makes the aesthetic break up inside and both out. Looks like they've done a recessed entry on this one as well. They're getting the windows installed on this, so it's, it's really in that phase where they're gonna start roofing and sheetrock work on the inside. We'll make our way on down the line a little farther and see where we're at.
I mentioned before the continuous ridge beam and the double marriage line wall. This is a good look at that ridge beam. That's all plywood that runs full length, hitch to tail. All those trusses are fastened up to that. They come together and make a super ridge beam. Double marriage line wall, that's the stuff that really keeps the box in its integrity together all the way through the set. You'll notice on the inside, the, the mutters are working double time. The electricians and plumbers have done their part. They're closing off all the walls and they're gonna go ahead and mud all those seams and edges and stuff and get it ready for texture and paint. So this is a good spot to look at the venting that we do on the eave. You can see up to there that that cement siding has a bunch of holes, perforations in it. That allows the venting to go through the cavity of the roof up above. We don't like to have all those different vents up on the roof and the exterior aesthetics don't look right that way. So we use a continuous ridge vent system with our vented soffits. Allows us to keep minimal vents on the roof. We've, we've obviously seen on the production line lots of variations in different sizes of product. We've seen 32 wide doubles all the way down to 14 wide singles like this one here. So this impact, this square footage is much smaller than what we've been seeing along there. It just shows the diversity. We have about 75 different floor plans already pre-approved and designed, ready to go. And we like to think that we've got enough for everybody to be happy, but inevitably somebody wants to change something. So when we get into this area here, you can see that they've already started to texture and paint inside this house. These guys are all caulking and getting everything ready for the exterior paint as well. So simultaneously, the inside and the outside is getting its paint. By the time it reaches the end of this, it's, it's ready to go out to the next building. When the unit reaches the end of this line, it shoots out in single sections through this, and we're going to come up on our appliance dock. We use Whirlpool appliances here, and we have a vast array of different packages and or cooktops, ranges, wall ovens, refrigerators, dishwashers, etc. to try to meet the needs of everybody. We'll make our way down. When the homes reach the end here, we run a ramp out across, so that's where we install all the appliances needed for that particular home at this time. Once they get the appliances loaded up, they're ready for this unit to go out and make its way into what we call the Freedom Building, also known as the Final Finish Building. And we'll head over there now. Okay, so we're kind of coming in, obviously, at the very end of it. We'll make our way to the other side of the facility where the, where the homes enter in. Um, off on the sides here, you'll notice lots of stuff from different ship loose components that are needed for on-site construction completion, like rolled ridge vent. So when the units are set together, that particular part is a ridge cap that allows the, the vent cavity to breathe through those eaves. You'll see different variations of fireplace components and, and other things. Carpet off over here. So we order carpet as the customer selects it. So we have standard grade of carpet and standard grade of pad. And we have multitudes of levels and different selections for the clients to choose on, a, on their house. As those rolls come to us, they're labeled with that home and they will get implemented into the units down along here prior to shipping. We have a multitude of different shower options, fiberglass. We do tile showers. We have glass barn doors, ribbed glass sliding doors, pivot doors. Lots of those components are along in here. Screen doors for sliding glass. Um, lots more siding, just dry goods that we gotta keep out of the elements. Wire ventilated shelving, wood closet shelving, cornice boxes, <clears throat> lots of moldings that we have. Different, depends on the application of the house if somebody's upgraded their trim. All the material we use is a real wood. We don't do any uh, paper wrapped, it's all paintable. Um, we do have levels in the larger profile that's an MDF material that's painted. We're getting down to the cabinet area here. So all of our cabinet doors and drawers and face frames are all real wood. We have nine different uh, selections to choose from. You're seeing a lot of it laid out over here to make up all the different sizes. Um, we don't bring in any of the faux wrap cabinets. It's all real wood here. Um, they are DMH modular box cabinet. Uh, comes to us uh, out of a company here in Oregon. Um, so we'll assemble those boxes and face frames and put the doors and drawers on there. This is the doors where the units come in. Where we left the appliance dock back there, the units then come into this facility here. Although we're performing tests all the way down that line to ensure that everything is, is up to par and where it needs to meet code, this is where they really get tested. When the homes come in here, 
we actually run electricity to them so that we can see that everything is functioning. We're also going to run and energize with water all your fixtures, toilets, showers, tubs, sinks, to make sure none of those are leaking. We rely heavily on our uh, dealers with their setup crews in the field to, to marry these units together, and then they've got to make crossover connections too. Sometimes they may have a bathroom on one side of the floor plan and a bathroom and a kitchen on the other, utility room on the other, or they may have exterior hose bibs that they want to have. So they've got to ensure those crossovers. Uh, same with the electrical. So electrical crossovers will need to be connected on site. You can see here, those will clip and cl plug and play when they're there. Looking in through here, you can see these, this is juiced up and powered up. That also helps the, the workers to be able to see what they're doing. So that's an espresso dark shaker cabinet. Off over on this side, opposite of the kitchen will be the living room. So there's one of those sky view dormers we talked about that gives you the aesthetic feel on the inside as well as an exterior look on the outside with the trap windows. Looks like they're doing a fireplace over here. Looks like a hearth as well because it's elevated up. So they'll get a hearth on that. Good look at a standard application to our Westridge series. So that's a normal window treatment. You get the trim in the bottom, the sill, up and around. You get a cornice balance up above. It's like a basic master bathroom. They've done a stall shower in place of the tub shower. They've done a bump up with uh, drawers, two lavvies, wood trim mirrors, tulip lights. We're basically just working our way back down the direct line. We came up through the side there to take a look at some of those components. Once again, you'll see it powers on in these units as well testers are working down all through these things to make sure that by the time it reaches the end, it's ready to tag and ship. We're really stringent as you can see the colored tape. That's QC coming through and marking and saying, you know what, there's imperfections here that need to be reworked. So we're very, very sticky on that. We want to make sure the homes go out really nice. Another look at a different kitchen. They got the appliances stage. They're working on backsplash and the countertops, all the cabinetry. You can probably hear the welding and the music going on. The, the, the iron workers, the guys that are building our frames off to the side, they've got their own separate area over here. We can take a sneak peek at that when we get to the end here. Okay, when the units have come down this far, we try everything we can to make sure that everything's complete and done, and then they're closing up the plastic. So they're dropping the plastic down. They're gonna seal that up, make that ready for transport. Might be kind of hard to see, but there's a tile shower in process, pretty large one, 60 inch with a bench. We'll get a glass partition wall and doors. It's got accent tile in the niche. They're getting ready to hook up on this unit and take it out right now. This kind of goes back into what I was talking about where some of these components and upgrades that we have, we just can't complete in station, that tile shower being one of them. So typically the shower's going way back at midline, but because it's a tile shower, you've got specialty pans and walls and all that intricate work. So he'll do what he can incrementally, and essentially this will make its way around out back and get staged, much like we do with our quartz and granite countertops where they've got to work on those outside. It just really bogs the line down. Now what I think we'll do is we'll head out to uh, the parking lot. We've got a couple display models set up out there. We'll uh, power them up so we can take a look at the final product. Okay, so this is a Westridge model 1260. This was kind of a, a dead plan, so to speak. Um, we did a few modifications to it, relocated the master bedroom door, set it back. This is an opportunity for us at the plant to showcase new decor, what's trending, what's hot, um, any kind of new options. So whenever we at the facility have the opportunity to put a home up at the, at the uh, plant, it's, it's time to load it up. So this particular unit has a brand new Mac Tower dormer in it. Um, we inlaid the tray with some accent wood to tie in with the crazy blue cabinets that we did. So kind of the trending thing. Um, we've had good warm response on it. This particular kitchen is known as the Katopia kitchen. Uh, it's a kitchen package that we've promoted for all the Skyline plants 
across the country. So it's a, basically it's a designed per plan. A client can come to a dealer and say, hey, I really like this plan. Can I get that kitchen package? Um, and so then our corporate design team will work together to incorporate all of these components and design it into that kitchen. Um, lots of very, very fancy stuff. You got a smooth top, slide in range, stainless steel hood, stainless steel shelves. You got a TV, you can do some cooking shows and work on it. Uh, farm sink with strainers, baskets, fancy faucet, microwave in, fancy refrigerator, wine storage, um, hydraulic cabinets with rib glass to kind of showcase lots of goodies, so to speak. Lots of backsplash. Did a transom, just kind of break things up. Uh, we've had a very, very warm response. This has a, an upgraded door trim and window treatment, known as the Craftsman. So it's very trendy and modern right now. Um, basically, roughly a 1600 square foot house. Um, we did a high flat ceiling over the kitchen and dining. So our traditional cathedral, which is a seven and a half foot sidewall, cathedral up to a high peak in the middle and transitions back down. The dormer gives us the ability to go high flat here. And so we were able to do a high flat over the kitchen and dining room to give this big wow factor. Um, so far the response has been great. Uh, we did an entertainment center off on this one, basically with electric fireplace, TV niche for you to place your component in TV. Um, feeling pretty good about it. If you guys want to head in here, we'll take a look at the master. One of the things that we like to do at Skyline is utilize 36 inch interior doors wherever we possibly can standard. Uh, you'll notice our hallways and our doorways are going to be large. Um, it's it's a, a big trait we've been known for for a long time. Did a transom window over the bed, um, kind of get some more light, natural light in here. Um, bathroom, we did a floating lavvy, so it kind of gives the appearance of this lavvy's floating. LED backlit mirrors, china sinks, we have a slipper tub with a floor mount faucet, and we're showcasing a full tile pan and tile shower in the master with sliding glass barn doors. Um, very, very nice. We've got uh, large mini blinds in here. We upgraded from the standard one inch metal minis to the two inch. We'll make our way down and take a look at the utility room. And he's already taking a look at it, looking good. <laughs> Pretty spacious laundry room. We've got a sink in here, overhead cabinets. Large area to put more goodies in. Washer dryer area over there, shelf over. Make our way out into the hallway. Guest bathroom over here. Blue cabinets again with white linen. We did the white trim mirrors, tulip lights. And we've got two bedrooms back here, pretty spacious with their own little walk-in closets. Rocker style electric switches. Decorator receptacles. So that concludes the tour today. I'm glad you guys were able to make it. Uh, that's how Skyline McMinnville gets it done. Thanks. Yeah.